Hello traders, welcome to another daily recap. Today is Monday, April 29. It's 8.50 a.m. Eastern. The market opens in 40 minutes. Should be an interesting week. I have an opinion that the SPY, the E-minis, are due for another leg lower. A little bit of a pullback, but I'm not going to predict anything on the bigger picture because I'm only interested in taking small trades here at our levels, which are more finely tuned. However, with what's going on with the Japanese yen, the fact that there's an FOMC announcement on Wednesday, it put, could be slow leading up to that. But there's always a lot of movement around the announcement of whatever decision comes out of that meeting. So it could be interesting today. Um, they're, they seem to be kind of at a pretty important level. They've got a lot of overhead resistance to fight to get above or at the high of that big breakdown candle from the week ending April 19th. Anyway, that just doesn't really apply too much. We want to understand what the big picture looks like, but we're taking these trades more at a micro level here, these scalp trades and the E-minis. And we will circle back around, take a look at this chart, and analyze all the trades taken in the E-minis based off the levels here in the spiders. We'll see you then. It's almost 7 o'clock now. The market closed a few hours ago. So there were two levels that were hit, two pretty good trades. Let's just take a closer look at this, and I'll talk through this, and then we'll take a look at the recordings of both. So after 9.45, the spiders coming back up into 5.10.18. So the operating level was 5.10.13. And I decided not to take this trade the first time. You'll see this. I'm just telling you now um, why it is. It's because they came up. It wasn't quite close enough right here to what I call a near miss by my definition of a near miss. But they pulled it back pretty quickly and started looking at some other things and thought, well, I'm willing to buy higher. In fact, or, or sell higher. I even identified a level above here. I think it was 512. That I was going to scale in if they continued higher. But when they stalled out and got back below, I realized, you know, uh, they're not as strong as I, as I thought, so I sold here and trailed this position down. So actually worked out pretty good. I just didn't get – this would have worked. Playing by the rules, there's no reason you shouldn't have taken this short trade, by the way. And yes, while it did get above the fumble threshold, spiked above it a little bit, um, and it might have felt kind of weird, you know, just strictly based on playing by the rules, this was a base hit either way. So anyway, I got it uh, the second time around. And this next level down here, they were falling pretty hard. There was good support down here. This was the level out of the calculator. Uh, actually, take that back. This was not. This was the gap left over from yesterday. So it was not a formula-derived level. Still important. It just happened that the support was lower. So I withstood this one, just traded one contract at this, and got a base hit on this one. So enough of that. Let's take a look at the recordings because it will make more sense then. I have this queued up to where I have the level and the the level, of course, drawn on from the morning before the market opened. It did the fumble threshold and the profit target objective below. And I'm getting ready to put a limit order to sell two at roughly the same level there in the E-minis. I changed it to one when they pulled back pretty quickly. I, at this point, I thought, well, I'm still going to sell one. Just not as confident about it because of the way they came down and were bouncing around. And ultimately, after a little while, I just kind of changed my mind. Like I said earlier, it would have worked out either way. Uh, playing by the rules, there was this was not close enough to call it a near miss. I'll just put it this way. But I canceled the order, so you saw that disappear, and I've, I'm expecting them to go higher. So I think I put level higher, and let's scrub ahead so you can see that, and uh, waited for them to go higher, and I was going to start selling at 511.26 and whatever, but they dropped. So when they dropped down here and looking at other indicators, made the decision that, okay, they were not as strong as I thought they were. So if they come back up, I'll go ahead and sell this time, sell two and try to get more because there was evidence that there was probably at least 10 points, maybe 10 to 12 points or so that I could ride this thing down. More if you were considered that they would go all the way down to this level. But uh, anyway, so sold two. I'm in the trade at this point. Um, bought one back at five points. I don't know if you noticed that or not. That was not four. That was five. So I was right. There were there was some downward pressure here, some selling pressure. And I'll scrub this. Well, Let's just let this play. I'm not going to scrub ahead. You can just watch this. It sped up 16x from real time. So I'm trailing this down with like maybe a seven-point trailer, I think, at the time. But I identified a target. And I'll just tell you. You can kind of see in a minute where this is. But it's the – I'm pointing to the low, the kind of the opening range low here. And so I thought, well, there's gonna they're going to probably bounce here at some point. I'll get out at this point instead of waiting – Longer, I don't want to get too greedy. Expect I can trail this thing all the way down. Either they're going to stop me out and I would lose $50 because I'm behind the curve at this point on this trailing stop, or they go lower and I squeeze more points out, which is what they did. So you'll see me squeeze, I think, eight and a half, nine points or so out on the remaining 
half of that contract, and there's the level. It corresponds with, uh, I think I actually put it on the chart at some point just as a reference. Essentially, it's, it's this zone here. I mean, they're going to react from this opening range low if they get down there. That was the um, intent, and that's what they did. And so later, when we go back to the full day, I'll put that line on the chart just to show you um, where that is and that it was, in fact, the interim support. So this, uh, well, here we go. It's the entrance point was 51.48, and I got out at 51.38 and a quarter. So eight and a half points or so um, when, that mark, when that order was closed out. So I just let it come all the way down. And maybe I will go ahead and scrub ahead. It's taking some time. So you can see it. So it's getting close, and they come fill the order. So there's there's the uh, level satisfied, and the next one I'll just kind of cut this video to the next trade because there's nothing in between. When they got down to five hundred eight twenty five, took a while. They basically hung, uh, hung out around the five ten thirteen level for most of the day. Here we go. Now it's t after two thirty afternoon, and they started falling pretty fast. And you know, like I said, it could have felt weird that. Uh, they didn't bounce immediately at this out of the money, as you'll see. But I held on. I only bought one contract at this point because I really wanted to be on the short side today with more contracts than on the long side. But I know there's going to be a bounce. Or you know, there's the probabilities are there going to be a bounce at these levels. So 508.25 was important. So we'll come down. Or I'll scrub ahead. So here they start following, and you'll see them slice through 508.25. The order's filled because it's automatically in the system. I'm long one at this point, just looking for four points to get a base hit, and I just let it play out. It took some time, but um, at this point you can see the fumble threshold, 507.85. Yeah, they got way below that, but this there was support on, there was at least three different reasons why this was good support. I'm not going to go into the details at this point, but when you're looking at other charts and you know what you're looking at, you can just wait things like this out. And it turns out that, um, you know, this level worked, but... Uh, they even went higher. I, could, I mean, I only had one contract, so really not in the best position to trail something when you don't have one. It's either all in, all out, or take some of it off and trail the other half of the position or so. That's kind of the way I like to do them. So you'll see the four points get pulled out of the market pretty quickly on this last level. I'm just going to scrub ahead. There we go. So, and as... We'll take a look at look at, at one more time. It's easier to see that this level provided support in the bigger picture in the longer time frame. It got below it, but ultimately this zone, this area was support. So back to the beginning, the short trade was here. This line is now dotted as 510, 13, the operating level. You might be wondering why this level here at 509 showed up. That was where I jumped out of the trade. The trailing position turned out to be the interim support, as I expected. Came back down, sliced through it, and this was the next trade. Two base hits um, with a little bit of extra on my, you know, creative liberties that I took. We'll take a look at the tracking log and we'll talk through that. Not much to explain on the regular tracking log. Two base hits equals eight e, e mini points. So you can just take a look at the numbers as they are increasing on this log over time. And what I did was take a base hit. I got five points on the base and I trailed it for nine and a half. So it was 925 before commissions with my little one contract plays. So that's the trades. Those are the, the trades for today. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. And thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to support the channel. I'd appreciate it. Have a great day.